Welcome to All Faith Theory Channel. Before the video, please subscribe to get notifications about the new content, and share the video with your friends. Listen now the Psalm 44 for the director of music, of the sons of Korah, a maskil. God has freed his people in the past. Would he bring salvation again? Psalm 44, attributed to the sons of Korah, presents an urgent appeal for the help that only God can offer. The tone of the psalm fits well with the crisis in Jerusalem when the Assyrians besieged the city and threatened to destroy it during the reign of Hezekiah. Especially consider verse 16 and the blasphemies of the Assyrian ambassador recorded in 2 Kings 18 19-37. The Lord's people faced a severe threat, but not because of their unfaithfulness to the Lord as had happened on several other occasions. This hymn comes from a people with a clear conscience who are confident in their fellowship with God. The psalm begins by looking back at the great victories that God had given his people. The supplicants speak of the great works of deliverance that God performed in past generations. God delivered the promised land to the people of Israel, verse 2. The psalmist recognizes that the conquest was accomplished by the grace of God, not by the prowess of men, their arm that gave them victory, and even your right hand, and your arm, and the brightness of your face because you were pleased with them, verse 3. The hymn passes from the history of the ancestors to the people's experience at the time of the composition of this song. The psalmist gives glory to God for his continued protection. The Israelites defeated their, en their enemies with God's help, verse 5, and not their military strength, verse 6. Because God protected his faithful people and punished their enemies, Israel offered his constant praise, verses 7 and 8. The people's circumstances changed, and the threat they faced became the issue from the words now, however in verse 9. God had rejected his people, leaving the nation to suffer in the face of its enemies. Weak and ashamed, the Israelites fled from other countries. Instead of remaining steadfast and protected in their land, they were overcome and scattered among the nations, verses 9-16. to It is common in other prayers of this type to find a confession of national guilt, but this anthem is not the case. Although the psalmist does not raise a charge against God, he does not address the people's suffering as a result of their sins. On the contrary, he affirms the faithfulness of the people, all this befell us, however, we have not forgotten you, nor have we been unfaithful to your covenant. Our hearts have not turned back, nor have our steps turned from your ways, verses 17 and 18. If the suffering did not come because of the people's rebellion, the other possible reason would be their faithfulness. Israel was not being punished for being disobedient, it was being persecuted for being faithful. Two facts support this conclusion. 1. The author's language, which not only denies guilt, verses 17 to 21, but also says that suffering came because of his love for God, regarded as sheep to the slaughter, verse 22. 2. Paul's quotation of verse 22 in Romans 8.36. In that passage, he assures the faithful that God will not forget them. Paul does not speak of the punishment of the disobedient but of the divine protection of people who live by faith. At the end of the psalm, 
the people ask the Lord to wake up and bring deliverance. Unable to free themselves from their oppressors, Israel, Israel recognizes God as the only Savior. In the case of the Assyrian threat, God woke up and sent an angel who annihilated the enemy's army, giving deliverance to Hezekiah and his subjects. 2 Kings 1935-37 Today's nations need to learn from the example of these people. We are not to rely on the military strength of men, but the power of the Lord. Now pray with me the Psalm 44. We have heard with our ears, O God, our fathers have told us what you did in their days, in days long ago. With your hand you drove out the nations and planted our fathers, you crushed the peoples and made our fathers flourish. It was not by their sword that they won the land, nor did their arm bring them victory, it was your right hand, your arm, and the light of your face, for you loved them. You are my King and my God, who decrees victories for Jacob. Through you we push back our enemies, through your name we trample our foes. I do not trust in my bow, my sword does not bring me victory. But you give us victory over our enemies, you put our adversaries to shame. In God we make our boast all day long, and we will praise your name forever. Selah but now you have rejected and humbled us, you no longer go out with our armies. You made us retreat before the enemy, and our adversaries have plundered us. You gave us up to be devoured like sheep and have scattered us among the nations. You sold your people for a pittance, gaining nothing from their sale. You have made us a reproach to our neighbors, the scorn and derision of those around us. You have made us a byword among the nations, the peoples shake their heads at us. My disgrace is before me all day long, and my face is covered with shame. At the taunts of those who reproach and revile me, because of the enemy, who is bent on revenge. All this happened to us, though we had not forgotten you or been false to your covenant. Our hearts had not turned back, our feet had not strayed from your path. But you crushed us and made us a haunt for jackals and covered us over with deep darkness. If we had forgotten the name of our God or spread out our hands to a foreign God, would not God have discovered it? since he knows the secrets of the heart. Yet for your sake we face death all day long, we are considered a sheep to be slaughtered. Awake, O Lord! Why do you sleep? Rouse yourself! Do not reject us forever. Why do you hide your face and forget our misery and oppression? We are brought down to the dust, our bodies cling to the ground. Rise up and help us, redeem us because of your unfailing love. Pray with me, our Father, with great faith. Lord's Prayer Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom comes, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. God will bless your victory mightily. Now repeat after me, Glory to Lords and the Holy Spirit, Amen. I love you all, thank you all for listening. In the name of God, please subscribe to the channel. God bless you forever. Goodbye.